Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 8 of Design and Analysis of Experiment DOE. So, today's contents on sampling distribution, topic is sampling distribution, contents are definition of sampling distribution, the central limit theorem, z distribution, chi square distribution, t distribution and f distribution. So, let us see what is sampling distribution. The sampling distribution of a statistic is the distribution of all possible values taken by the statistic when all possible samples of a fixed size n are taken from that population. It is a theoretical idea, we do not actually build it. The sampling distribution of a statistic is the probability distribution of that statistic. So, let us explain little more here. I told you that the important concept line population and sample. For example, look, this is my population, this is the whole or entirety, whole or entirety. Now, when you take sample, you take a portion of that whole or entirety of the population from, from different uh, segments and the total collection will be something like this. Let this population may be finite or may be infinite finite means uh, the total number of items of interest will be n, infinite means it is you know it is infinite. Now, suppose you have collected a sample of size small n one time. So, let this is known as this is my sample 1. So, you have collected a sample of size n from the population may be finite, may be infinite. Theoretically, we start with infinite population. Now, you compute statistics from that sample like the sample average y bar and uh, your variance sigma s square. As this sample is my first sample, I can say this is y 1 bar s 1 square. Let collect another sample of size n which is sample 2 and here what happen y 2 bar and s 2 square these are the sample statistics of interest. In the same manner you can you can you can go for suppose n number of sample n with y n bar is the sample average here and s n square is the sample variance. So, essentially we said that if you collect different sample from the same population, the sample statistics will change, the value will change. If the sample statistics is sample average that is y bar, then y 1 bar, y 2 bar and y 1 bar they will be different and what will be their values that is not known in advance and they follow certain distribution. So, in general if I say theta, theta is the population parameter and theta cap is the sample statistic, then we say that theta cap will have a, distrib have a probability distribution. 
So, this the distribution of theta cap which is basically a statistic is known as sampling distribution. Theta cap may be the sample mean, theta cap may be central standard deviation or sample variance, theta cap may be any other any other major statistic of interest. Okay. So, <coughs> so, let us see that what are the different sampling distributions. The first widely used one is z distribution. We have discussed z distribution earlier, which is unit normal distribution, which we say normally distributed with mean 0 variance 1. Second one is t distribution. Third is chi square distribution. Fourth is f distribution. These are very commonly used sampling distribution and has lot of application in DOE subject as well as as such in inferential statistics lot of applications. So, very quickly we uh, revisit the unit normal distribution. Now, see this uh, diagram here left hand side we are talking about PDF of uh, y variable that is um, normally distributed and right hand side conversion to z. So, z equal to y bar minus mu by sigma and then you will get a pdf like this. And last class I, al I also uh, have given you that how to use the um, unit normal distribution. So, uh, we uh, so it another example. So, what we are saying that the engineer intends to measure the intensity level of targets on a radar scope using filter type 1 and assume that it is normally distributed with mean 94 and standard deviation 6.5. What is the probability that the intensity level will be within 100 or other way I can say that within 100 means may be less than equal to 100. Okay. So, we will use alpha point 0 0.05. So, theoretically suppose if we see through the distribution what happened this mu uh, uh, and ultimately um, we are this is in the original scale and this is in the z scale. So, what you require to do you require to convert the y to z. So, y minus mu by sigma now y is known 100 and uh, your population mean is 94, population standard deviation is 6.5. So, ultimately if you put you got z and z equal less than equal to 0 0.92 and this is the probability 0 0.8212. So, what happened here then actually when you convert it into z distribution. So, this value will become 0 and your ultimately y bar minus mu by this sigma this z value here this value is we are saying z less than equal to 0 0.92. So, somewhere here suppose this is the value z equal to 0 0.92. So, you are interested to know the the area under the curve left to this value. So, this value is so probability z less than equal to 0 0.92 this value is 0 0.8212. So, how do you get this one see the table see table our z value is 0 0.92. So, see this is this is z value go down get 0 0.9 and then add 0 0.02 this side. So, 0 0.92 0 0.9 and 0 0.02 0 0.92 and this value is 0 0.8212 0 0.8212. Okay. So, suppose your z value is 
then you see what happened this is 1.9 and you move to the right up to 0 0.06 this is 0 0.9750. So, it indicates that left to this value that means point this is this is 1.96 this value the area under the curve under the curve left to this point is 0 0.9 I think 9750. So, that means what is this this area under the curve right to this 1 minus this means 0 0.025. So, this is the way you have to see read the table. Here uh, we will discuss central limit theorem very important theorem central limit theorem which is, is known also no abbreviated as CLT because what happened you will see the when you use the um, statistics in real life situation and uh, all those statistics uh, whether what will be the distribution of the statistics whether it is normal or non normal. So, that um, that matters matters a lot. If it is normal things are easier because you have different kind of uh, easily doing test normal distribution normality test and other test normal distribution related test. So, central limit theorem is a is a boon to such kind of uh, situation because it gives you the approximate normality situation. Let us <coughs> understand what is central limit theorem. If y1, y2, yn is a sequence of n independent and identically distributed random variables. So, please understand the meaning. You have y1, y2 and yn these different observations. Observations are coming from a particular population. This population with respect to this random variable has certain distribution that may be normal may be non normal, but some distribution is there. So, y 1, y 2, y n identical i i d independent and identically distributed means when you take any observation it will it is not affected by the presence or absence of any other observations not related to y 2 is picking up y 2 no way related to whether y 1 is already picked up or y n will be picked up later on. I, this is independent identically distributed means all y 1, y 2, y n every observation will have the same probability distribution of that population distribution. So, if it is if it is a normal population y 1 is also normally distributed, y 2 is normally distributed, y n is also normally distributed. You may be thinking that if I collect y 1, y 2 data then this value one value only then how it is will be normally distributed. Keep in mind you have not collected data you are thinking that you will be observing in obj a, n observations or n data points. So, that means what will be the y 1 value it can be any value. So, that is why it is probably it is probability uh, it has probability distribution and that too same probability distribution of the population. If this is the situation now see that means <coughs> we are saying that expected value mu and variance sigma square for all the observations. And then if we create uh, another quantity x which is sum of the observations then the limiting form of the distribution z n which is x minus n, n mu by root over n sigma square when n is very large is unit normal. Okay. So, <coughs> let me explain. So, y 1, y 2, y n you have collected or you will be collecting you are creating another variable called x which is y 1 plus y 2 plus dot 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 y n that means sum of y i i equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, now you can create z distribution where we are writing like z n which is sum total of all those things this is x minus n times mu divided by root over n sigma square where mu and sigma are the parameters related to this population 
and hence it is the expected value of y 1 y i is mu and variance of y i is sigma square. Okay. So, then this is unit normal, this is unit normal. Okay. Now, let us see that <coughs> what is the use of this unit normal, one important use you know. Suppose, you calculated y bar which is 1 by n sum total of y i, y bar is a statistic. So, it is a random variable, so it has a expected value. Okay. So, it has a, an expected value. So, what will be the expected value of y bar? Let us see that then it will be expected value of 1 by n sum of y i which is 1 by n that means sum of the expected value of y i. So, expected value of y i is mu. So, the sum of mu that will be n mu. So, 1 by n into n mu equal to mu. Okay, so, that means y bar is a random variable with mean. So, y bar is a random variable and it has it has it has mean mu. Now, what is the what will be the variance of y bar? That means variance of 1 by n sum total y i. So, I told you earlier variance of c u i equal to c square variance of y. So, then from this you can write this is 1 by n square variance of sum total of y i. Again variance of sum total of y i as y i s are independent. So, that will be sum of variability each variability. So, that means 1 by n square 1 by n square variance of y 1 plus variance of y 2 like plus variance of y n. So, then this is nothing but 1 by n square and variance of y 1, y 2, y n all are same that is sigma square. So, n such sigma values will be added. So, n sigma square this one means sigma square by n. So, that means y if y is y is the original variable that is the that is basically characterizing the population. Now, for and if it is normally distributed with mu and sigma square, then if you if you sample then the statistics y bar it will also be normally distributed with mu and sigma square by n mu n sigma square by n. Okay. So, that is what is the interesting observations here. Second thing is that suppose you create another quantity called y bar minus mu by by let it be sigma let it be sigma by root n. So, can we not write down this one y bar is 1 by n sum of y i minus mu by sigma by root n. So, this can be what is this sum of y i minus n mu divided by n will be multiplied. If I multiply n both then, then root n into sigma we can write down sum of y i minus n mu by root over n sigma square. Then this sum of y i is nothing but x earlier we have seen that sum of y i is x. So, sum of y i is x and that that means this is x minus n mu by root over n sigma square. So, as a result it is z distribution with 0 1. Okay. So, this is what is the I say that use of central limit theorem. So, that means if you create such statistics like this y bar minus mu and which is basically following this 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 concept then it is unit normal. Now, we will discuss another important distribution which is known as chi square distribution, chi square distribution. 
So, <coughs> let us assume that you have unit normal distribution that means, the population is unit normal in that sense and you have collected then n observation z 1, z 2, z n n observations. Now, if you create one variable called y which is z 1 square plus z 2 square plus plus z n square, okay. then this y is chi square distributed with if it is n then suppose I, I, I want to write k. So, z 1, z 2, z k let it be because n we have used several times. So, let it be k. So, then it will be chi square k that means, chi square distribution with k degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, let us see the how what is the p d f for chi square distribution see f y this is 1 by 2 to the power k gamma k by 2 y to the power k by 2 minus 1 e to the power minus y by 2 y by 2 and here will be comma y greater than y greater than 0. So, what is the mean of chi square distribution? Mean of chi square distribution is the degree of freedom k and variance is 2 times k. So, chi square mean mean of chi square distribution chi square variable if, if I write it is k and variance of chi square variable it will be 2 times k. Degree of freedom is very, very important concept because if degree of freedom changes the shape of the chi square distribution also changes you will see here. So, here we are we are assuming that this is chi square. So, if k equal to 1 then the, the shape of the distribution will be like this. If it is 2 then the green color if it is 3 less green, if it is 4 this blue color, if it is 6 this maroon, if it is 9 this red. See the change of the shape of the distribution shape and size. So, degree of freedom is very very important concept all of you please remember when you use chi square distribution please do not forget to mention the degree of freedom also. If you say y is chi square distributed it is meaningless if you say y is chi square distributed with k degrees of freedom or n degrees of freedom then it is meaningful okay now now i'll show you one example uh, that uh, use of chi square distribution here so this this example we have uh, we have discussed several times that radar's uh, intensity level on target for a in radar scope um, experiment and using filter type 1 this is the data 12 data points suppose suppose uh, uh, your uh, you want to know whether the data is coming from normal distribution normally distributed population or not and suppose uh, you know the stand, uh, standard deviation is 6.5 use alpha equal to 0 0.05 alpha is the significance level significance level we will discuss what is significance level in hypothesis testing in more detail for the time being you think that significance level means it basically talks about what level of errors the level of errors level of errors you expect or you expect or you tolerate tolerate while making decision. making a decision. What is the decision here? Here we are saying whether the uh, this data come, comes from popu, uh, normal population or not. Based on this chi square uh, uh, analysis you will accept yes it is ac it is coming from this, but there will be error this is what is the alpha. So, 5 percent error is accepted here. So, now see the see the quantity what is the quantity we are using here for chi square we are using the quantity that y i minus y bar square divided by sigma square i equal to 1 to n. What is this y i minus this one? If you go to formula s square you will find out this will be 1 by n minus 1 
sum total of y i minus y bar square. Okay. So, now if you divide it by sigma square, so this is basically a square the for the, the um, variance sample variance there we have you with this this quantity is very important here. Okay. Now, this can be rewritten like this y equal to 1 to n y i minus y bar by sigma square. What is y i by minus y bar by sigma sigma square? Okay. So, so you will find out this is this is nothing but z. Why? Y bar if we just think that y bar is estimate of uh, estimate of mu y bar is estimate of mu then this is this can be written approximately i equal to 1 to n y r minus mu by sigma square and you know the standardization z is y i minus mu by sigma. So, this is nothing but then z 1 square plus z 2 square plus z n square here we are writing n z n square. Okay. So, what happened then that means, this is a quantity which is nothing but sum of the can be approximate to sum of the uh, square of the unit normal variable then it will be chi square distribution. So, this is the huge. So, if you create a statistics in and then you find out that this statistics is nothing but sum of the square of unit normal variable then that statistics will follow chi square distribution. Okay. Now, what will be the degrees of freedom here? What will be this k in this case? So, in this case k is not n, the reason is you have not you have estimated mu the mean. So, estimated mu in terms of y bar, so 1 degree freedom lost, so that is why k is n minus 1. What does it mean? Suppose in your sample, you, your sample size is n you have computed y bar, you have comp then you are basically creating chi square in using this formula when sigma square is known, sigma square is known. So, what and then ultimately what is happening y r minus minus this, this quantity becoming chi square as y bar is computed 1 degree is lost. So, this one will write chi square n minus 1, chi square n minus 1 is this quantity means this quantity follows chi square distribution within minus 1 degrees of freedom. Anyhow, in this example, so you we have computed this chi square 0, chi square 0 this is just notation used here, this value is 15.13. Okay. Suppose I, I know that our n is 12, so n minus 1 is 11, then the distribution here with k degrees of freedom k equal to 9 is something like this. So, then k equal to 11 here, it will be something also suppose this something like this, let it be like this. And then what we are <coughs> doing here chi square, uh, it is chi square 11. So, if I come say that, uh, that alpha equal to 0 0.05 the detail will be told to you later on and in that case what happen if for you we want to find out what is the value of chi square 11 0 0.05. Okay. So, you will see chi square table then here in chi square table there will be uh, that rows represent and columns and the first column all degrees of freedom and in the all other columns these are the different probability values. So, our chi square 11 with probability significant 0 0.05 this value is 19.675. So, chi square 9.6 and our computed chi square value is 15. So, it simply indicates that suppose the threshold value here suppose if I consider something like this this one let it be 19.675 and the computed value is somewhere here 15.13. So, we it is coming from it is coming from normal population. Okay. So, this is the huge although you require uh, use of that significance level and hypothesis testing knowledge, 
but I, I intentionally kept here so that you you understand that where to use chi square when your statistics will be chi square so that is the fundamental now another dis important distribution is t distribution so t distribution is interestingly it is it is the ratio of a ratio of z by chi square k by k suppose you create a situation when your statistics is such that it is the ratio of a standard normal distribution and square root of chi square distribution normalized by k divided by k. So, then this quantity this quantity will follow t distribution. Okay. So, t distribution has this kind of uh, probably uh, pdf is complicated pdf and you go through Montgomery chapter 2 you will get this kind of formulation and it is very similar to normal distribution and very important distribution in uh, particularly in statistics because applied statistics particularly because all the um, parameter test everything will be based on this. Okay. So, so this is what is our T uh, that you see the T D how T distribution looks like. Okay. So, T distribution after when sample size is large T distribution will uh, will become almost normal distribution equal to equivalent to normal distribution. Now, let us see the use of T distribution suppose in in, in in previous example we have used y bar minus mu by sigma by root n this is z from central limit theorem. And now what happens suppose sigma is not known instead this you are using you creating a creating a statistics which is something like this s by root n instead of sigma you are writing s then the sigma is constant but s is a random variable ok. So, I can write this is nothing but y bar minus mu by root, o, uh, root over s square by n ok. Now, this can be written like this root n y bar minus mu by root over of a square which further we can write like this that this will be y bar minus mu divided by root over sigma square by n divided by n minus 1 a square by sigma square into 1 by n minus 1 whole square root whole square root. So, this is sigma square and n these are constant forget about this, but what is y bar y bar minus mu by sigma if I this is by. So, what will happen this sigma then it will be z and n minus 1 a square by sigma square this is what is this this is chi square we have seen the chi square now chi square and then into 1 by into 1 by n chi square by n minus 1. So, this is nothing but a z by root over chi square here it is n minus 1 by n minus 1. So, it is t distribution. So, it is the interesting uh, result that when you create this kind of statistics most of the time we use this, but if you do not know sigma you use s. So, if you know sigma this will be z distributed if you do not know sigma then you will use a sample st standard deviation this will be t. But again what happen as, I, as you see that if the sample size is large t ultimately converges with z. So, for large sample size under this situation also you will be able to use z distribution, but if sample size is small then and, and your statistics is this you have to use t distribution. Okay. So, this is the example same example and here what happened sigma is not known. So, sigma not known we computed s from the data and then t 0 is computed like this and again from table we found that this computed value is less than the tabulated value. So, ok. So, this is basically we can say that the mean intensity level is 100, but it is not far away from 100. 
So, the last important standard under sampling distribution is F distribution, F distribution. Suppose the example is suppose you are basically interested to compare the variance of two, two pop different populations like population 1 variance is sigma 1 square, population 2 variance is sigma 2 square. You will create a ratio and we have found out that n minus 1 s 1 square by sigma 1 square by suppose n 1 n 2 minus 1 s 2 square by sigma 2 square if we create you, we all know this one follow chi square distribution with n minus n 1 minus 1 degrees of freedom this follow chi square distribution with n, n 2 minus 1 degrees of freedom and and if you divide this if we divide this by n my n 1 minus 1 and this by n 2 minus 1. So, ultimately this quantity will become s 1 square by sigma 1 square divided by s 2 square by sigma 2 square. If we further assume that sigma 1 square equal to sigma 2 square then what will happen sigma 1 sigma 2 square will cancel out this result quantity will be s 1 square minus s 2 square. So, this kind of situation is nothing but the ratio of two chi square variable normalized by their respective degrees of freedom. Then this quantity follows F distribution with suppose nu 1 de numerator degree of freedom and nu 2 denominator degree of freedom. So, what is this? Suppose you are you are you are you are having a statistics which is the ratio of two chi square variable and which is weighted by their a respective uh, degrees of uh, freedom and then the resultant quantity or the statistics this will follow normal uh, sorry this will follow F distribution. F distribution is a, uh, is a very complicated one in terms of PDF and it, it also depends on uh, it also depends on uh, the degrees of freedom. If degree numerator and denominator degrees of freedom changes, then F distribution shape and size will also change. Okay. So, let us see uh, the example. So, here what happened? We have done the experiment earlier with filter type 1 and filter type 2 and suppose we got 12 observation experimental data in first case and 12 another case. Suppose we want to know that whether uh, two population variants differ significantly or not. So, you can use F distribution and uh, with such uh, such uh, such de development S 1 square by S 2 square there will be normally uh, F distributed with N 1 minus 1 and N 2 minus 1 degrees of freedom N 1 N 2 both same 12. So, 11 11 degrees of freedom. So, from the sample you compute these two values S 1 square S 2 square it is 1.56. Now, from theory you see that whether this value this uh, this uh, what is the value theoretical value from table you will get and then you compare the two values. If the computed value is less than the tabulated value you accept that the variances are not different they are same. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how to see the uh, this distribution F distribution keep in mind here for every uh, probability or uh, level of significance there is a probability value alpha or alpha by two alpha value. So, what happened uh, the numerator degrees of freedom will be across the column and denominator degrees of freedom will be across the rows and as it is 11 11 you see that 11 uh, the 11th row and your sorry 10th row and no 11 11 11 and 11 uh, this this side 11 and this side also 11 because n is 12 so n minus 1 will be 11 not 10 so 11 11 but in the column side in this table 11 is uh, not available so you can you can what you can do you can uh, you can find out the value for 10 11 new 1 and 10 new 2 11 new 1 and 12 new 2 and then take the average of the two that will give you this this tabulated value 3.48. Okay. For the time being you understand that if the tabulated value is more than the computed value from the sample statistics sample variances then then the two variances are not different. Okay. What is the error whether the decision is correct or not 
all those things will be discussed later so i think i you 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 must go through sampling strategy because it is sampling strategy is very important one and i i i want you to do some kind of home study home assignment study on sampling strategies the sampling strategies can be random sampling stratified sampling cluster sampling and systematic sampling there can be some other variant of sampling strategies also but for the time being you want you must you have gone through random sampling but what is stratified sampling what is cluster strategy systematic sampling why random sampling is used in this case so all those things all those things you please uh, go through and it is your home assignment yes home assignment so home assignment one will be sampling strategy it is basically uh, this this student you all submit that what is what are the this four type of sampling strategy when it is used and something like this okay so with this i uh, finish this um, sampling distribution please keep in mind a very important thing is that it is a very important concept sampling distribution is nothing but the probability distribution of a statistic there can be different kind of sampling distribution depending on the uh, statistics of interest for example uh, <coughs> there will be z z uh, statistic z which statistics which follow z distribution statistics that will follow t distribution statistics that will follow chi square distribution statistics that will follow your uh, f distribution please keep in mind you must know when which kind of distribution will be used because this distribution probability distribution will be used in hypothesis testing in confidence interval in estimation particularly and these are the these are the references i i have taken many um, some amount of this uh, material from my earlier lecture applied multivariate uh, statistical modeling um, np and it is available in the np nptl video models video lectures thank you very much okay okay